Good morning. Now let us come into the subject manufacturing processes two. You know the, we are running the module three, which is machinability. And today is the second lecture on the machinability, the failure of cutting tools and tool life. As you know, the cutting tools play a very vital role, very very important role in machining, and its geometry. Now we shall discuss start on failure of cutting tools. then tool life and in the next lectures on tool material what are there in our today's lecture after attending this lecture here in this lecture the students will be able to state how the cutting tools fail and then illustrate the mechanisms and geometrical pattern of wear of the cutting tool then ascertain what should be the properties of the cutting tool material then define and assess tool life and last develop and use tool life equation so today only this much now failure of cutting tools <coughs> you know for smooth efficient and economic machining process to be continued the cutting tool should not be allowed to fail abruptly or frequently first of all the abrupt or catastrophic failure of the cutting tools have to be prevented totally and the normal failure by wear has to be delayed or life has to be prolonged but before we do so we must understand that how does a cutting tool fail because the fail has to be either prevented failure or it has to be delayed so how does a cutting tool fail that has to be understood first so cutting tools generally fail by mechanical breakage Due, due to excessive forces and shocks how does it happen suppose this is the cutting tool and this is the chief flowing lot of forces act on the tool tip if the tool is not strong enough or if there is lot of vibration or shocks then the tool will break by brittle fracture it is a total failure and this failure is very detrimental and this has to be prevented next is another method is quick dulling of the cutting edges by plastic deformation under excessive stresses and temperature now again you see this is the cutting tool this is the cutting tool and the chip is flowing on that and this is a chip contact length where lot of heat is generated temperature is generated the tool becomes very hot along with the chip and lot of stresses also act because of the high stress and temperature this material will become soft the tool material and may undergo plastic deformation now the plastic deformation may be either like this so the tool will be totally deformed or the deformation may be like this whatever be the kind of deformation the geometry of the tool is lost or the sharpness of the tool is lost hence it is called the tool becomes very dull and totally unable to machine and this is very very detrimental and it occurs very quickly within few seconds or fraction of second this plastic deformation will start if the cutting tool is not strong enough and hard enough then gradual wear so this kind of plastic deformation kind of failure has to be prevented it is very very detrimental and cannot be accepted anyway now let us see the other one gradual wear gradual wear of the cutting tool this process is gradual what happens this is the cutting tool and this is the chief flowing and this is the work surface lot of rubbing takes place here and here 
So, gradually the wear will take place, the material will be lost from the tool and from here also. This is called flank wear and this is called crater wear. This is a slow process and this is inevitable. This cannot be prevented, wear cannot be prevented. Whatever be the hardness of the rubbing surfaces, tool or chip, the wear will be there. But what can be done? That the rate of growth of wear can be controlled. So, ultimately what is the, uh, the decision that this catastrophic failure or immediate failure by plastic deformation and breakage should be prevented by the manufacture of the cutting tools and by the users of the cutting tool. But the wear cannot be prevented, but it cannot be, it can be retarded or slowed down. Now, next is conditions or deciding criteria of tool failure. That means, a tool is continuous, continuously cutting, but how one will understand that the tool has failed? Because when the tool fails, lot of problem arises in the machining, okay, machinability gets lost. The, in the just last time you heard in the last lecture, what is machinability? So, with the growth of as a, the tool failure, this machinability gets lost and the tool becomes may be totally unable to machine and the machine may be also damaged. So, the tool has to be withdrawn before it fails or immediately after it fails, but how one will understand the tool has failed. Now, there are two methods in R and D laboratories there is one method Now, sorry. Now, the conditions of deciding criteria of tool failure. What I was telling the how to understand that the tool has failed. Now, different practices are followed in different situations and different areas. So, in the R and D laboratories, in R and D laboratories, in R and D laboratories, how it is understood? When the tool breaks totally, that is total breakage of the cutting tool or tool tip. So, the tool is it is understood the tool has failed. It is very easy to understand the massive fracture at the cutting edges. So, chunks of materials will come out from the cutting edges. So, this also leads to failure. Excessive rise in cutting forces. During machining, some force will be there, but if the force rises very fast and excessively and lot of vibration takes place then it is understood the tool has failed. So, machining has to be discontinued, tool has to be replaced. But another thing which is most important flank and crater wear reaches their limits. So, the cutting tool gradually acquires wear if not failed by plastic deformation or breakage by gradual wear, but wear takes place very gradually and slowly. But when this amount of wear reaches the limit, preset limits, then the tool it will be understood the tool has failed and the tool has to be withdrawn. But in the machining industries, what is the done? What, what is done? How do they understand? So, first is excessive current or power consumption. Now, during machining, cutting force will develop and power will be consumed, and accordingly, there is an emitter or say power meter where it will be visualized how much current or power is being drawn. When the tool is about to fail or the condition is worsened, then the power or current will increase excessively and the operator will understand the tool has been damaged and need to be withdrawn. Then excessive vibration and sound beyond limits. Total breakage of the tool or tool tips, if happens, they will immediately withdraw. 
that means the tool has failed. They also understand from the dimensional deviation. Suppose they do turning operation, and while turning, they suddenly found uh, the find that the diameter is gradually increasing, unexpectedly. That indicates the tool has worn out excessively and it has failed. Rapid worsening of surface finish. With the damage of the tool, the surface finish will be very very bad. So from the con surface finish, the operators understand the tool has failed. And also, sometimes they understand from the adverse chip formation. If the chip formation becomes suddenly abnormal or unfavorable, they stop machining because the tool has failed. Now, the mechanisms of cutting tool wear. So, what we have seen that there are three modes of failure one is mechanical breakage, which is very random catastrophic and detrimental and has to be prevented. Second one is plastic deformation, which also takes place rapidly and that makes the tool totally unable to cut anymore. So, that has also to be prevented, but wear cannot be prevented, but it has to be reduced. The rate of growth of wear has to be reduced. Before we do so, we must understand what is the mechanism of wear? How does cutting tool undergo wear? What are the different mechanisms of wear? under the different conditions, so that action can be taken or planning can be made, so that this rate of growth of wear can be reduced to enhance tool life. Now, there are different types of wear that generally occur in cutting tools. First is mechanical wear. What is mechan mechanical wear? Mechanical wear. Now, there mechanical wear can be two types. Thermally sensitive, insensitive type. That means this kind of wear does not depend much on the temperature. And another thermally sensitive, where the rate of wear, mechanical wear, depends upon the temperature. First of all, say thermally insensitive. What are those mechanisms? Abrasion, chipping, and delamination. What is abrasion? Abrasion is really comprised of say attrition shearing or scratching and fatigue of the high points asperities. Chipping means the cutting edge you get certain amounts where at certain points the damage of the cutting edge a small amount of material gets removed and the continuity of the cutting edge gets lost. This is called chipping. Delamination this is the rake surface because of the stress sometimes the stress develops inside and it grows like this and this material goes out. Gradually, this material goes out. This is called delamination. Now, what is thermally sensitive type? Thermally sensitive type are adhesion, fracturing, thermal fracturing, and flaking. Now, adhesion, the cutting, the sliding surfaces when they meet, they meet at certain high points of asperities, high points of asperities, all right. And now, they, they undergo joint by welding, what is called welding. And there is a sliding motion, so the breakage will take place. Suppose this is one asperity of the chip, and this is another asperity of the tool, and this is the weldment because of high temperature and stress, that is called adhesion or welding like. Now, because of the sliding motion, the fracture can take place either here, it cannot take place through the weldment because weldment is very strong. This will take either through this or through this. If it fracture or separation takes place through this asperity of the cheap material, the tool does not lose anything. But if the fracture occurs through the asperities of the tool, then this amount of material gets lost. So, the cumulative loss of this kind of material from the tool which will lead to what is called adhesion wear. Thermal fracturing. So, gradual fracturing by high temperature or thermal gradient, there will be some loss of material from the tool surface. Then flaking. So, chunks of materials will go out along with the built up edge. Then thermochemical wear. In thermochemical wear, you know that there are two surfaces, this is two surfaces, this is one surface, this is the tool and this is the chip flowing. 
So, this is the surface rubbing surface and this is an intimate contact on high pressure and temperature. So, what may happen the material from the tool can go into the chip or sometimes the material can come from the chip to the tool, but this this migration or transfer of material from the tool to the chip that really causes loss of material and this is called diffusion. This process is as such slow, so the material gradually goes into the chip. Even if some material comes from the chip to the tool that does not help the tool because this material which is coming from the chip to the tool is very weak that does not help the cutting tool, but the material moving from tool to the chip and the chip carries it away that is a great loss for the tool and gradual wear will take place. This is called diffusion wear that is the material diffuses from the one surface to another. Now, this will happen only when these two materials or the rubbing surfaces or materials have got mutual affinity or mutual solubility number one. And then uh, secondly this will depend upon the temperature with increase in temperature the rate of diffusion accelerates and also the concentration gradient suppose there is lot of cobalt and there is no cobalt. So, the cobalt will diffuse into the chip from the tool say carbide tool. Now, this transfer trans transfer of material from tool to chip can take place in two ways either in a bulk. So, the whole material tungsten carbide cobalt or other things will go together or the material will go atom by atom say cobalt atom by atom tungsten atom by atom like that. Then this is called micro macro diffusion by mass dissolution which is much faster but it can also take place like micro diffusion slowly but steadily by atomic migration atom by atom material will be transferred from the tool to the chip and chip will take it away and the tool will lose materials and wear will take place this is called diffusion wear. Now next is chemical wear this chemical wear that means, chemical wear when the cutting tool material is not chemically inert or it has got some chemical affinity okay, with respect to the tool or environment or this cutting fluid then there will be chemical wear. So, chemical wear is detrimental, but it does not occur all the time. So, the chem cutting fluid has to be chosen carefully. Now, the galvanic or electrochemical wear. Now, galvanic or electrochemical is an electrochemical dissolution process. Now, you see suppose in a bath there is electrolyte and there is one anode, there is one cathode and they are connected like this and the current will flow. Then the material will gradually flow from this to that. Now, this is called electrochemical dissolution. So, this anode will gradually lose material just like wear. In cutting process what happens at the chip tool interface lot of heat is generated and that heat causes generation of electricity by thermocouple effect. Okay. So, the current is produced by that heat at the hot, zone, hot junction and the cutting fluid that is applied that behaves like if behaves like a cutting uh, say electrolyte the cutting fluid there will be lot of electrochemical action and material will flow from the tool to the to, to the chip and this will lead to loss of material, but galvanic wear is, not, is very slow and is not very common. Now, next is general pattern of tool wear and its geometrical feature. What are the usual pattern of tool wear, geometry of tool wear? Here you see that this is the cutting process, okay. this is the cutting process and this is the tool tip. this is the tool tip here this is the cutting a tool tip. Now, if this cutting point is magnified it looks like this this is the magnified view of this cutting point of the tool. This is the main cutting edge this is main cutting edge this is the auxiliary cutting edge and the chip flows along the rake surface. So, at the now this is a section of the rake surface this is a section of the rake surface. All right, and then the chip flows along with this. So, there will be some crater wear, this is called crater wear, 
and because of the rubbing action at the flank, there will be flank wear. This is the flank surface and this is the flank wear, which is uniform along the principal flank A similar wear occurs on the auxiliary flank, this is the auxiliary flank surface. Now, so what are the wear that occurs? On the rex surface, greater wear is a pond like and on the flank surf principal flank is a flat surface where if the cutting tool is like this, then this material will be lost and the flat surface will be produced like this and the auxiliary surface also this wear will take place. Now, what are the how this wear will be indicated or quantified? How this will be quantified? you see the crater the flank wear the flank wear is more important so far as tool life evaluation is concerned this is the total patch of wear now the average wear vb this is the average wear this is the most important index or say indication of wear feature of wear this is called flank wear and flank wear is measured by vb average flank wear then the maximum flank wear where it is maximum then a notch develops because of excessive rubbing and chemical action. So, this is called this amount is called notching wear. In the auxiliary surface, average auxiliary flank wear is denoted by Vs and maximum auxiliary flank wear is denoted by Vsm. What about crater wear? Crater wear is depicted by the depth of the crater, this Kt, and the width of the crater Kb and location of the crater group Km out of which Vb is most important, next is Kt and by Kt and Vb we generally express the amount of flank wear developed and crater wear developed. These are also utilized to decide whether the cutting tool has failed or not. Now, here you can see an exact pattern, a typical wear pattern of carbide tool inserts. Now, this is the carbide tool inserts of negative break type is a square insert maybe half inch square and this is another, ins another insert with a hole, but it is a square insert. But this is the tip of the tool which undergoes wear like this. So, here you see this is the rake surface, this is the rake surface and this is the principal flank and this is the auxiliary flank. Okay? Now, at the, at the rake surface we get lot of crater wear a grooving like crater wear and on the principal flank the flank wear which is very uniform and this is flank wear on the auxiliary flank. Now, the wear here you can see is a group like this is called notching wear here also you can find a small notch wear. On the rake surface at this end you can find one grooving wear. This grooving wear is basically a chemical wear process in addition to abrasion, abrasion and chemical action. Now, coming to a milling inserts. Now, there are different types of milling cutters, you know, slab milling cutter, plane milling cutter, end milling cutter, and there are different types of end milling cutters, and there are generally small shell milling cutter. And for making large flat surfaces, normally this uh, industrially face milling cutters are used. This face milling cutters. The face milling cutters are very large, they produce flat surface like this, this is the flat surface of the job, this is the job, this is the flat surface getting produced by this cutter, which diameter may vary from 80 millimeter to 800 millimeter, even beyond that and it has got large number of cutting edges around the periphery, all right and this is one cutting edge, which is fitted at the periphery and that removes, suppose this is the milling cutter, this is a cutting edge and this removes material. So, this is the unfinished surface, this is the finished surface and then this is a layer of material getting removed by this cutter which rotates at high speed. Now, this cutter if exaggerated it looks like this. So, this shows this schematically the how this tip of the tool undergoes wear. Now, tip of milling inserts this kind of milling inserts have got three cutting edges. One this is the main cutting edge, cutting edge number one and this is this is the main cutting edge, this is intermediate cutting edge or second cutting edge and this is called planishing edge, third cutting edge. So, there are three cutting edges 
and this main cutting edge takes the major amount of load and responsible for removal of material. Now, each one undergoes wear like this. At the corners, because of high stress concentration and temperature confinement, lot of wear takes place at the corners. Other way, these are flank wear and lot of crater wear also takes place on the rack surface. Now, this shows one practical example. One cutting tool, such kind of milling cutter has undergone wear. Here you see the main cutting edge, which has undergone wear and this is auxiliary cutting or sorry medium intermediate cutting edge where also wear has taken place and this is a planishing edge here also you can see lot of wear has taken place. Now, when this wear becomes excessive beyond certain limit we declare the tool has failed and it has it is changed. Now, effects of tool wear other than its failure. So, one thing we understand that by where also the cutting tool will ultimately fail after some time. But this where the growth of wear not only ultimately results in failure of the tool, this not only causes the failure of the tool, but along with the growth of wear lot of other problems develop which gradually reduce the machinability. What are those effects of growth of wear on machinability? Increase in cutting forces and temperature, because the tool be worn out the sharpness of the tool gets lost, it becomes just dull and more force will be developed and more energy, more heat will be developed because of that temperature will rise which is detrimental. Second, growth of wear causes increase in dimensional deviation. Yes, if the cutting tool gradually wears out that the dimension also gets affected. So, sub dimensional accuracy gets lost, surface finish is also impaired or jeopardized. Now, odd sound and vibration may take place even up to chatter very large sound when the cutting tool wears out. The wearing of the cutting tool also induce causes loss of surface integrity that is it induces lot of surface stress it's like tensile residual stress, micro cracks, burning, oxidation, rapid corrosion that kind of thing. So, the surface gets damaged again in addition to surface roughness. So, the surface gets spoiled by other factors also it is called surface integrity like tensile residual stress and uh, surface cracks, micro cracks and so on. It also causes unfavorable change in chip formation. The chip normally flows in a particular condition preset the design, but when the tool wears out and becomes excessive the shape of the tool starts changing and becomes unfavorable and cause some problem. Overall this mechanically weakening the tool. So, when the tool wears out suppose this is the tool sharp tool. So, it gets flank crater wear and flank wear. So, this tool becomes weak in this region. So, this portion breaks. So, this is another effect of tool wear. Now, friend, what should be the properties of the tool material? We have seen how this will be decided. What we have seen in the previous lecture and today's lecture till now that cutting tool fails, it will definitely fail, but it can fail in three modes catastrophic fail or immediate failure, random failure, total failure by breakage which has to be prevented. Second one is plastic deformation because of loss of hardness that is also to be prevented at any cost, but what remains is the wear. Okay. So, those two have to be prevented and wear has to be retarded, reduced rate of growth. To accomplish these three you know objectives, what should be the property of the tool material? Now, one by one you see high mechanical strength to prevent mechanical breakage under compression or tension or bending the material of the tool should be strong enough in compression basically, because most of the region of the cutting tool is subjected to compression. Then at certain points it is subjected to tensile, normally tensile strength of our tool material is less because it is very hard and brittle. So, tensile strength should also be adequate and then transverse rupture strength should also be reasonably high to prevent 
this mechanical breakage. Now, fracture toughness because of the shock or vibration, the cutting tool may break by brittle fracture. So, the fracture strength, the fracture toughness of the material should be high or at least or reasonably adequate or high. Now, high hardness for abrasion resistance to prevent or reduce, not prevent, to reduce the rate of growth of abrasion where the material should be, tool material should be hard. Then, now the strength and hardness that has to be high, that have to be high, but at low temperature, at ambient temperature, it may be high, but under cutting condition at high temperature and stress, these strength and hardness may fall, but then it will be detrimental. So, the material of the tool should be such that its strength and hardness should be retained or continue even at high temperature, cutting temperature. Then only the tool will survive. Otherwise, at high cutting temperature, the tool will become weak and soft. So, this is stated that high or enough hot hardness, hot strength and hot hardness. That is retention, ability to retain hot strength and hardness at high temperature. Chemical stability or inertness with rest against the work material, the atmospheric gases and the cutting fluids. Resistive to adhesion and diffusion, yes, it should be resistive to adhesion diffusion kind of wear. Thermal conductivity, very interesting, what it should be, should be high or low? It should be less at surface and high at the core, why? First of all, when the tool that is in contact with the chip, heat will be developed here. First attempt will be made, so that heat does not enter into the tool. That means, at the surface, the thermal conductivity will be low, all right. But once the heat comes into the tool, it should immediately disperse. For that, what is required? The thermal conductivity should be high at the core. First of all, it will be tried to reduce the amount of heat to be entered into the tool and secondly, whatever amount enters that has to be dispersed, so that the temperature rise becomes less, because it is not the heat, but the temperature that causes harm to the tool. Next is manu it's just manufacturable. Now, you, we should not imagine something which cannot be manufactured economically and easily. It should be manufacturable, it, the cutting tool material should be available and it should be of reasonable cost not very costly. Diamond is a very good tool, but it is very expensive. So, we should think of the cost also and safe in handling. There are certain tool materials which is you know environment uh, not friendly, not eco friendly. For example, there is a tool ceramic tool where silicon carbide is added whiskers and handling of silicon carbide during manufacture and use may lead to very serious problem even carcinoma or cancer kind of thing. So, this thing also to be borne in mind while manufacturing the tools, cutting tools. Now, measurement of tool wear, how will you quantify that how much wear has taken place, so that you can decide that whether it is crossed the limit or not. The various methods So, the various methods are from loss of weight or volume of tool material in one lifetime. You take the weight of the tool, if it is a small one, before machining and after completion of machining, then you take the difference. So, difference indicates the total loss of material either in volume or in weight, but this does not give the value of the features like the flank wear VB or cater wear KT, that does not that is not given. It gives a, a more or less a qualitative idea or quantitative idea the tool has worn out reasonably. By grooving or indentation method, this is a very old method and nowadays it is not that much practiced. Actually, this is the tool surface suppose and this is the worn out surface and by indenter, one indentation is made up to this depth okay? and you get an impression here on the surface like this and then again on the worn out surface the same indenter is pressed against the tool in the worn surface. Now, here this material is lost. So, the impression will be this much a small impression. 
So you see this, this impression will be small compression compared to this one from which the difference in depth. So this is the depth here and this is the depth here. From the difference in depth we can get this measurement depth of the crater wear k t. This is one method similarly by you know grooving also it is done, but this is old method it is not very popular. Now next is using scan uh, using optical microscope all right this optic using optical microscope is most common and fitted with a micrometer so first you see through the microscope and measure the width of the wear or you know, length of the wear say bb bm kt or the not kt by km etc by this micrometer this is the easiest method very reliable method and this is very common, very common method. Now, if you want to study the wear geometry qualitatively and the amount of wear or the feature by feature the uh, amount of wear in detail, then scanning electron microscope has to be used, but this is expensive and this is for generally detailed study. Now, scanning by TELISAR. Now, measurement of this group crater wear is very difficult. This type of crater wear, this profile is measured by telesurf, which is normally used for measuring the surface finish. Now, the radioactive method was another method which was introduced for some time to measure the volume of wear that has taken place in some complicated type of cutting tool say hob or such an other kind of cutting tool, wear of which cannot be could not be measured by other conventional methods, it was very difficult. So, radioactive method was introduced for some time, but it became obsolete in no time because it is hazardous. It is so hazardous that it is, it is dropped nowadays. Now, come to tool life. What is the definition of tool life? Life of the tool. What do you mean by tool life? Now, again, it is defined in different manners. So, in R&D laboratories or institutions or research, it is defined by actual machining time or the length of the machining time, actual machining time or duration say 5 minute, 10 minute, 12 minutes like that by which a tool performs satisfactorily after which it needs replacement or reconditioning. That is in between two replacement or reconditioning, what is the actual machining time by which the tool could work satisfactorily? That length of period of machining, actual machining or duration is called tool life and it is expressed in minute. For example, say here machining time till V B, the average flank wear reaches a limit of 0.3 millimeter and this is an international standard. So, this is one way and this is so the tool life is defined by actual machining time in between the failures and it is expressed by mil minute. Now, it in industries how is it done? actual length of time of satisfactory machining okay this is like r and d sometime the volume of products how many pieces have been produced that is the in you know, the measure of tool life say 20 pieces what is the life of the drill 20 holes what is the life of that milling cutter 30 uh, pieces or volume of work material removed before failure Next is assessment of tool wear, how the tool wear amount of tool wear is quantified that has to be considered. Tool life is generally assessed and expressed in R and D. How it is done in R and D laboratories? The tool life is generally assessed and expressed in laboratories and it is always done by the span of machining time in minutes say 10 minutes, 5 minutes, 20 minutes like that. In industries, how is it done? Generally by generally not always, but by several methods by one or more of the followings. What are those? By actual machining time in minute as it is done in R and D or number of pieces of work machined in one lifetime that is 20 pieces of pin machine. 
So what is the life of the turning tool? Say 40 pieces, like that, by number of pieces. Again, by total volume of material removed. What is the life of the milling cutter? So it is expressed by the volume of work material removed by that cutting tool satisfactorily before failure. Or total length of cut, say 1 kilometer, or say this is actually Vc cutting velocity into time. So this is called length of cut, Lc. So tool life is de decided by the what is the total length of cut the cutting tool can could work before failure. Now come to tool life equations. Tool life equation, what is equation? Equation means the pictorial representation of the relations between the variables and their responses. So here the response is tool life and variables are cutting velocity, feed, depth of cut and other parameters, tool geometry may be. So this connect, connectivity is expressed by equations. With the use by using these equations, we can evaluate or estimate the what will be the life of the cutting tool, which will enable planning of machining, process planning, and so on. Now, this was first done long back, more than 100 years back. F. W. Taylor, a scientist, first introduced a te technique. What is called Taylor's tool life equation? In this method, it is based on a fact, very simple way, based only on the effects of cutting velocity on tool life, as if only cutting velocity, if varied, will affect the tool life. Other parameters will not affect that much. Anyway, so how is this done? How the tool life is developed, uh, determined, and this shows how the tool life is determined experimentally or say conceptually, and then how the equation is developed by Taylor and so on. Suppose this is the machining time, the growth of machining time and this is a flank wear, say Vb. This is Vb, average flank wear. Say at a cutting velocity, low cutting velocity Vc1, you continue machining after at regular interval, you withdraw the tool and measure the Vb and plot it this. So this way, number of points will be plotted from experimental results. You measure the tool life at different velocity and sorry, this wear, the VB, you measure the VB flank wear of the tool and plot against the machining time. So then you draw a line, this is the wear pattern. Now, if we decide that the limiting value of the average flank wear is 0.3 millimeter, this is the 0.3 millimeter line. So, this is the end of machining and corresponding time, this time is the tool life span. Now, if we increase, repeat this experiment at higher speed, Vc2 greater than Vc1, the tool wear will grow faster and the life will be less by say T2. For even higher velocity V3, life will be T3 and for V4 and etc., life will be T4. Now, for V1, T1, V2, T2, V3, T3 and V4, T4, V5, T5, etc., we get set of uh, data. Now, this data will be utilized to correlate tool life and the cutting velocity. How is this done? Now, this is the curve. Now, again you now plot. This is tool life obtained say T1, T2, T3, T4 you obtained by the previous experiment and the cutting velocity corresponding cutting velocity Vc1, Vc2, Vc3, 4 etcetera. All right. Now, if you plot This is the points. Okay, this is V4 T4, V3 T3, V2 T2, and V1 T1, and then you join this line. This is the plot. Now you can understand if you plot it, just a calibration. Now if you machine at a certain arbitrary velocity, what will the tool life? This will be the tool life amount of tool life. But how to correlate? Make an equation. Prepare an equation relating velocity and tool life. Now if you draw in a log scale, in a log log scale the same velocity and tool life, then we get a straight line. We get a straight line and these are the corresponding points and you get a straight line. Okay? And this is the slope, this is the slope of the curve say alpha. So, tan alpha is equal to n and this suppose this is 1. 
it starts from 1 1 value 1 say 10 20 and so on. So, this log scale. So, this c is the intercept that means, when the tool life is only 1 velocity will be this much and now this is a straight line equation of which will be like this v t to the power n the slope is equal to constant this intercept. Now, if we this if we know this constant and this constant n then for given value of v we can estimate what the value of tool life. If we decide tool life what will the corresponding velocity we can determine using this simple equation. This simple equation v t to the power n is equal to constant is called Taylor's tool life equation. It has got tremendous application. Now, I shall show you one example. Use of Taylor's tool life equation. An example. Suppose there is a problem. If in turning of a steel rod by a given cutting tool material and geometry at a given machining condition, in a given machining condition that means, everything is same only varying is the velocity under a given environment say cutting fluid application the tool life decreases from 80 meter minute to 20 minute tool life decreases due to increase in cutting velocity from 60 meter per minute to 100 meter per minute. Then at what cutting velocity the life of that cutting tool under the same condition will be 40 minute. Now, what we get here? Here V 1 is given what is V 1? V c 1 is 60 meter per minute. What is V 2? V 2 is 120 meter per minute. What is V 3? Not known that has to be determined that is at what cutting velocity this was determined. What is T 1 given? T 1 is 80 minute. What is T 2? 20 minutes. What is T 3? 40 minutes. So, these are the data given we have to determine velocity v 3. So, this is the problem. Now, let us see how it is solved. Now, assuming Taylor's tool life equation use the equation v t n is equal to constant that is v t n is equal to constant. Okay. Now, this can be therefore, since it is constant v 1 t 1 to the power n v 2 t to the power n is equal to v 3 t 3 to the power n is equal to constant all are same. Now, from these two if we put like this then t 1 by t 2 is equal to v 2 by v 1 and here is power n the values of t 1 is known t 2 known v 2 known v 1 known. So, we get the value of n from these known values and suppose this is 0.5. So, this is obtained 0.5 value. Now, what we have to determine? We have to determine V 3. Now, from this here V 3 T 3 n is equal to V 1 T 1 n is equal to we could take V 2 T 2 n also. Anyway, let us take this one. So, from where we get V 3 V 1 is equal to T 1 by T 3 to the power n. n is known 0.5, T 1 is known 80, T 3 is known 40 minute and V 1 is also known that is 60 meter per minute then V 3 is equal to this expression which is equal to 84.84 meter per minute. This is how it is determined. So, now, you can see how powerful this Taylor's method. Now, modify Taylor's tool life equation. Now, friends just now you heard that Taylor 100 years back developed the Taylor's tool life equation, but that time he assumed uh, that only the, the cutting velocity is the variable, but really the feed and even depth of cut plays some role on tool life. Now, keeping in view that feed and depth of cut also plays some role in tool life a new equation can be thought of. This is called modified Taylor's tool life equation that has been done later on. What is there? Tool life is equal to C T A constant V C to the power x, feed to the power y and depth of cut to the power z. Now, where C T is a constant, but it depends upon the tool work material, tool and work material and limiting value of V b, whether the limiting value of V b is equal to 0.3 millimeter or sometime 0.4 millimeter or 0.6, but remember normally 0.3. So, that will decide the work material, tool material and limiting value of V b the value of C t. Now, what is x y? What are the x y z? x y z are called the indices. The value of this indices depend upon the tool work material and machining environment. 
that is cutting fluid application. Now, it is obvious that out of this x, y, z in this is x that is power of velocity is maximum and the effect of depth of cut is minimum. So, z is the smallest, x is largest, x may be say 0.5, y may be 0.2 and z may be even 0 0.05. However, the values of exactly the CT, AX, Y, Z for different tool work material combinations are available in machining handbooks. There are lot of handbooks are available on machining and there the charts are given for different work material, tool material combination, cutting fluid combination and you get these values of X, CT, X, Y, Z. But if it is not available, then it can be developed also. You can do experiment and by doing a lot of experiments, the value of X, Y, Z and CT can be determine and you can produce a database which will be used further by somebody else. Now, this is the end of the lecture today and now some problems are given for your practice. This is the problem 1 and problem 2 very similar. I just, just give you a little hint during turning a metallic rod at a given condition the tool life was found to increase from 25 min minute to 50 minute when velocity was reduced from 100 meter per minute to 80 meter per minute. How much will be the life of that tool if machine at 90 meter per minute? That means, here again you see that uh, what are given V 1, V 2, V 3 are given T 1, T 2 are known only T 3 the time T 3 tool life has to be determined using Taylor's tool life equation. Now, there is another problem too. Here instead of cutting velocity the speed rpm of the drill is given. But you know that velocity is equal to pi d n, n is the rpm of the drill and velocity. So, the diameter of the drill remains constant. Therefore, the v t n is equal to constant in this case this v can be replaced by pi d n where n is the rpm, n is the rpm alright and then pi d will be cancelled from the equations and n will remain but the procedure will be exactly same, there will be no difference. Now, some quiz tests are also given for your practice, very interesting. Now, four options are given for a particular statement and question and you have to identify the correct one. Select the correct answer from given four options. For example, number one, in high speed machining of steels, the teeth of milling cutters may fail by, in high speed machining, you look carefully into the statements, the high speed machining of steels, a strong material, the teeth of milling cutters fail by mechanical breakage, it is intermittent cutting, plastic deformation, wear, all of the above. Here the answer is given on the next frame, you can see later on. So, you have to select judiciously here. Tool life in turning will decrease by maximum extent if we double the depth of cut, feed, cutting velocity or tool drag angle, which one is most sensitive for creating tool life. Third one, in cutting tools greater weight develops the rake surface, the principal flank, auxiliary flank, the tool nose, greater wear obviously on the rake surface. To prevent plastic deformation at the cutting edge, the tool material should pauses. That is plastic deformation occurs due to softening, lack of hardness. You have to find out the answer, high fracture toughness, high hot hardness, chemical stability, addition. Obviously, the high hot hardness is the answer. Now, you can see the answer in the next page, all the answers are given. Okay. Use now practice, you can find out lot of questions as uh, exercise in many books also and you can practice. Thank you.